Hello everyone. In this session, we will discuss the disposal of receivable. It's a key concept in introductory accounting as well as intermediate accounting courses. In intermediate, it's covered a little bit more in depth. This topic became especially important in the real world during the financial crisis of 2007-2008. In this session, we will break down the basics of selling and pledging receivable and explore the significance of this method in real life financial practices. Just basic stuff, this is not intermediate accounting. So what does disposing of receivable means anyway? It's essentially converting your account receivable into cash. There are two primary methods to do so. You can either sell the receivable, which is known as factoring, or pledge the receivable, which is getting a loan against that asset, against that receivable. We will discuss both starting by selling or factoring the account receivable. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Receivable, or simply put, the technical term is factoring. When a company needs quick cash, it might sell its receivable to a third party known as a factor. So first, we make a sale. So we have an account receivable of one million and we made a sale of a million. Now we might give this customer 60 days to pay, but we need the money now. So what do you do? We go to a factor, we go to a finance company, a bank, a financier, and we'll tell them, look, we will sell you this receivable. So we are selling this account receivable. We're selling this asset and, and we need the money now. Okay, so if the receivable is worth a million, we're going to sell it, but guess what? We're going to sell it for less than one million. So why would we sell it less than one million if an asset is worth a million? Because the other party, well, as long as they are sane, <laughs> right, they will not pay us a million dollars or more than a million dollars. The other party will pay us less. They might pay us 950. They might pay us only maybe 910,000. They might pay us, I don't know, 980,000. It all depends on the quality of the receivable. Why is that important? Because the other party will try to collect the whole million and pocket the difference. So if they gave us 910,000, they have a potential profit of 90,000. Now there are, various type of factoring. There's factoring with recourse, factoring without recourse. As a financial accountant, we don't get involved in this topic. I just want you to understand the big picture. Now, why are we selling this receivable? Because we want the money now. We made the sale and we cannot wait 30, 60 or 90 days that we gave the customer to pay. Now, why did we give the customer this much time? Because we want to make a sale. So first we need to make a sale. We entice the customer of making the purchase. How do we entice them? We give them time to pay. Then we figure out how to finance the purchase. How do we finance the purchase? We sell it to a factor. Yes, we are gonna be losing a little bit less money, but that's the cost of doing business, the cost of financing the sale. So the company sells the receivable to a factor, which could be a bank or another financial institution. So the factor may agree to pay 980, 960, 900,000. Now we want to collect as much as possible as close as possible to a million, but no one will give you a million. Why? Because they have to pay for collecting the money. They have to pay for the effort. They have to pay for the time invested to collect the money. Therefore, and they want to pay you as low as possible. They would rather pay you, you know, $600,000. So they have a potential profit of a million. Would that happen sometime? Sure it does. If the company is desperate for money and the account receivable, the customers, they are not credit worthy. It means whoever buys those receivable may not be able to collect the money. Then 
you might sell it at 600,000. But under this example, if we sold the receivable for 980,000, which is a good deal, we record the loss of 20,000. This is a loss or a cost of financing your sale. Now bear in mind when we sell a receivable, selling means selling. Selling means you have to remove the receivable from the books. Now you're going to see why I am emphasizing this point. So when you sell a receivable, when you factor a receivable, you remove it from the books. In other words, that receivable, that 1 million of AR is credited for a million and the receivable is gone. The receivable is removed. The asset is removed from the books. Another way to raise money through, through account receivable is pledging. What else can you do with your receivable? Rather than sell it, you can pledge it. Pledging a receivable is basically using this asset as a collateral for a loan. What is a collateral? Collateral is when you promise someone else something in case you did not pay. So for example, when you want to buy a car, you may use your car as a collateral for a loan. Now, I don't think against borrowing, especially to pay for a car unless you have to, but I, I don't believe in uh, loans. For example, if you want to buy a house, you put your house as a collateral. So if, if you don't pay your mortgage, the bank will take the house. So the house is a collateral. The car is a collateral. In this example, the receivable itself is a collateral. Now, bear in mind, in contrast to selling the receivable, you are not removing without removing the receivable. You are not removing the receivable from the balance sheet. So the receivable will stay on the balance sheet. And this is an important point for you to distinguish between pledging and selling. So let's assume the company wants to borrow $35,000 from a bank. The company will pledge the receivable as a security note. So the receivable will stay. They will have cash of 35000 and they will have a notes payable of 35000 You don't touch the receivable. Now what you do in the notes of the financial statements, in the notes of the financial statements, what you will do is you will disclose this information. Disclosing means what? Means you will tell the users that you have this receivable pledged so they know this asset is pledged so they know that in case something happened the bank will take over this receivable so this receivable is pledged it's not really the company the company owes it to the bank in case they did not pay so if the company fails to repay the loan the bank or whoever gave you the loan they gave you the loan they have the right to collect the money from the customers it means you don't get the money the bank or the finance company that financed this loan will get the money so the journal entry for pledging with debit cash and credit loans payable or notes payable while maintaining the receivable on the balance sheet again i'm going back to the balance sheet in pledging you keep the receivable in selling and factoring you remove the receivable two different things in both situation you are using the receivable to raise money to bring money to the business now, why is this important? This is important because during the financial crisis of 2007, 2008, it doesn't have to be the financial crisis, but it happened during the financial crisis where companies utilizes this strategy to fudge their books and specifically a company with the name Lehman Brothers, which is it's gone, but that's what they did. So the distinction between selling a receivable and pledging a receivable is critical, is critical. Why? During the 2007-2008 crisis, Lehman Brothers blurred this, thing, this distinction to improve their financial statement position. Now, specifically, Lehman did not have a receivable. Lehman had other assets. They had financial assets. They had financial instruments. Specifically, something collateralized debt obligations or CDOs. What are, what are those, those CDOs? Well, those are assets. So think of it as Lehman had collateralized that obligation, which is an asset. Think of it as a bond, as an investment. So what they did is to raise money, to raise money, they pledge those poor quality asset, those CDOs, but reported them as if they sold them to avoid recording a loss. Now, why is this important? Because if you have assets like CDOs, just call them assets, or some sort of a financial instrument. Financial instrument, it means a financial asset. 
what's going to happen to this financial asset you have to write it down or you have to write it up it means you if it lost value you have to take a loss if it went up in value you could also record the gain an unrealized gain and unrealized loss now receivable the same way if there, if you cannot collect the receivable you can write you have to write it down and take a loss called and receivable called bad debt so what Lehman did is this they took those bad assets those poor quality asset and what they actually did they pledged them they pledge them and when you pledge them it means you have to keep them on the books you still owe them and if you owe them you have to write them up or you have to write them down well and if they're poor quality assets you have to take the loss and the losses were so large that it will wipe out Lehman so what they did is they pledged them but they acted as if they sold them so they pledged them as an asset but they record the transaction as a sale so what they did is they got the money removed the asset did not have to write the asset down and it looks like they sold the asset yes they sold them a little bit at a loss but they would still rather take the loss rather than write them down substantially so this kind of misreporting can have can have severe consequences on investors and when Lehman was obviously uncovered with this fraud you know the company went down and they brought the whole market with it but this is the important of distinguishing between whether you sold something and you have to remove the asset from the books or you only pledge that something it means you keep the asset on the books and if you have to keep it on the books there are other things you have to do in the case of Lehman Brothers write down the asset and write it down a lot because those assets were really poor asset means poor quality asset because they were backed by mortgages that those mortgages were not good but Lehman tried to make them disappear from their balance sheet so they don't take the unrealized loss at this point what you should do is go to Farhat lectures work multiple choice true false questions again this topic is covered more in my intermediate accounting course at a deeper level factoring with recourse factoring without recourse how to prepare the journal entries we don't do this in this course invest in yourself study hard and stay safe